The question on this edition of Ask AD, how did you get your job? Did you go to college? Does my son have to go to college to get into radio? Short answer, no. <laughs> the email reads, hey, AD, my son and I love to listen to you and we have never met you, but it feels like you know us. It's weird to say, but thank you for being such a good friend. My son hears you and says he wants to do what you do because you get to be cool and help people through their day. Does he have to go to college to get a job in radio? What should he study? Susan. Well, first and foremost, thank you so much. That's incredibly kind. I really appreciate that you make my little show a part of your day. Second of all, if what your son wants to do in terms of being a broadcaster is to help people, then he is way ahead of the curve. Only because, look, a lot of people um, think they're getting into something like this to be cool, but... Um, all my friends in radio will tell you, radio, we are at the very bottom end of the entertainment food chain. So um, the reason I got into radio was because radio, when I was a kid, kept me company. Um, and I wanted a chance to keep people company and wanted a chance to impact people's day in a positive way. And being on the radio is my little way of maybe sort of trying to leave the world a little bit better than when I found it. And if I've ever had any success whatsoever, I think the motivation to try and make the person listening feel like there's someone there for them, which by the way, there totally is, and make them feel like someone has their back and make them feel as though getting into the car is something they can look forward to as opposed to something they can dread. If I have any success whatsoever, it's probably due to that. So like I said, off to an awesome start if the reason you want to do something like this is to help people. Um, I did not go to college to be on the radio. What you, I don't think you do need to go to, well, I'm proof, you don't need to go to college to be on the radio, but what you do need, you need a foot in the door. And my foot in the door came from being in a band. When I was a kid, when I was a teenager, um, I was in this band and we got a record deal. Much to my parents' chagrin, I turned down um, a scholarship to Tufts and New England Conservatory of Music. I was going to go do their double degree program and study jazz and classical percussion. I played drums my entire life, and well, there's a very good chance there's a very good chance I probably would have wound up a music teacher or a drum teacher or something like that had I taken that path. Um, but this screaming band I was in, <clears throat> for some reason, kind of as a goof, got offered a record deal when I was a kid, and I discovered really fast that. If you offer a teenage boy a choice between a dorm room and a tour bus, they will take the tour bus every single time. Um, so yeah, no, I, I did not go to college. I turned on a scholarship and I, I think my mom has uh, recently decided that was okay. But at the time, it did not go over incredibly well. Anyways, we were signed and managed by all the same people that looked after Corn and Limp Biscuit and Lincoln Park and all these bands have sold tens of millions of records. Needless to say, we were the one band that did not sell tens of millions of records, but we had some fun, we got to see the world, I got to make records, and I got to do a lot of things. But it all came to an abrupt halt when, I'll, I'll never forget it, because things were going really, really well. Um, our record was, I think, just getting into the top 20, and we were playing this massive, massive festival in Florida, I think. We were having a great day. Everything was going awesome. We'd just gotten off tour um, with another band, and we were about to start a new one, sort of a headlining tour, and we were having a great time. When we got the call that uh, our Polygram, who owned our record label, had been bought by another company, and technically our record label didn't exist anymore, so there was no more money. It was time to bring back the tour bus and figure something else out. So. I was in New York City, um, where my family's from, trying to figure out what else I should do. And one of my best friends in the world at the time was this guy called Will Pendarvis, who was the afternoon guy at K-Rock in New York City back then. Now, if you listen to me on 94.5 The Buzz, you might recognize the name because at one point, long before even Rod, he was the morning guy on 94.5 The Buzz. And I decided I was going to move to Houston. I was like, okay, it's a media-driven town. There's something that I can apply my tiny bit of knowledge about how the media industry works too. So I'm going to move to Houston. I was like, hey, Will, I'm moving to Houston. What should I do? What did I, what did I do? Okay, that's better. I was like, I'm moving to Houston. What should I do? And he was like, ah, be on the radio. It's easy. And he helped me make up a demo that made me sound like him. Now, um, your path is probably going to be a little bit different. 
So there I was in New York City, not really knowing what to do with my life. Um, but I did know that it was going to be something media driven. And I did know that I stood a much better chance of doing something like that in a town that wasn't like New York City. Kind of trying to be a bigger fish in a smaller pond. Because in New York, there was like some guy that used to be in a band on every single corner. And it was a weird place for me to be in because like I'd had this kind of head start on life. I got this record deal when I was still essentially just a kid and thought the rest of my life would be laid out amazingly and did that for like the next seven years and that was amazing. However, however, um, I got to the point where all my friends were graduating college and they were all getting real jobs and had cars and apartments and stuff like that and I was completely broke, utterly penniless, had nothing to my name. All I really had was my resume which said guy in a band and I didn't even have a band anymore so it was a weird spot to be in. I decided I was going to move to Houston. My friend, uh, Will Pendarvis, who, like I said, if you are someone who goes back a long way with the buzz, you might remember him as the morning guy long before even Rod Ryan. He helped me make this demo that made me sound like him. I was like, Will, I'm moving to Houston. You live there. What do I do? And he was like, ah, be on the radio. I'll show you how. So I made this demo. and. The fact that I'd been in a band was kind of sort of my foot in the door. Both my boss at Sirius XM and my boss at The Buzz had known and played my old band. And they went, oh, you're that guy from that thing. Um, sure, you can have one weekend overnight shift a week. And I got that and I've sort of been weaseling my way up with many false starts and steps back ever since. So that's how I did it. But what I had that you can have and that you need is a foot in the door because a foot in the door gives you an opportunity when someone can't make it in, when someone gets sick, when someone quits and goes to a different market, when someone for some reason can't do the job that they are doing, it makes you top of mind and gives you an opportunity. Now, um, I don't know, quite frankly, what gets taught in broadcasting school. I didn't go. Um, but I do know this, if you go to college and you want to be in broadcasting, what you should use your college time to do is get an internship and apply absolutely everywhere. Every TV station, every radio station, every place where people talk into a camera or a microphone, just try and get an internship there. Uh, and also, something to note is the worlds of television and radio are... The lines are getting blurrier and blurrier. Case in point, when I first started in radio, there was no expectation that I would ever do video. In fact, when I first started in radio, um, it was not uncommon for program directors to come into the studio while you were on the air and say, what the hell are you doing on your MySpace page? You look after that when you're not on the radio. When you're on the radio, that's it, end of story. Now, we are expected to be on like 25 different forms of social media going live on all of them at exactly the same time and it could not be more different. So if you are, and that brings me to another point, if you are going to college for radio or broadcasting of any kind and you are learning from someone that's not currently doing it and maybe hasn't done it in a little while, chances are things are very different than the last time they did it because this is an industry that is changing almost overnight like it's utterly different now than it was for me six months ago like six months ago I was on a handful of radio stations now I'm on 40 and that's kind of sort of like the norm for a lot of people we get spread you know across a much wider part of America and that just was sort of an unthinkable thing when I first started in radio. The idea of being on multiple stations and the amount of work that took was like, what? What, what are you thinking? No, no, you got to focus on one thing, one thing only. Don't check your MySpace page while you're doing it. Now, uh, I'm on, I think, around 40 radio stations. So you, you, if you go to college, should use that to get an internship at any broadcasting, at any place where they broadcast professionally. That's what you should do. Um, and use that to get your foot in the door and to get yourself an opportunity and also to see up close and personal how broadcasting is being done right now today because like I said, it changes really, really fast. If you are looking to be a doctor or a lawyer or a dentist, you can't just go stand and look over a doctor or a lawyer or a dentist's shoulder as they work and then learn their trade that way. It, it doesn't work that way, but you can with radio. and. Um, that's what I would advise you to do. If you go to college, maybe you study broadcasting, but most important thing is you use it to get yourself a foot in the door so you can learn from people that are doing it right now and get yourself an opportunity when it comes. 
The other thing that I will add is, look, you've seen it, um, YouTubers, podcasters, there are plenty of people that have never set foot in a college, that have never set foot in a radio station or a television station that make way more money than I ever will um, being a broadcaster in this digital era. And that's fantastic. And if you can do something like that, um, well, all of what I said means absolutely nothing and I'll probably be coming to you for a job one day. Um, but I can tell you this, in speaking to other people that hire people and look after internship programs, if there is a candidate that has a strong social media following or a YouTube page or a vlog or a blog or some sort of social media presence, and if that social media presence has any kind of uh, success, well, they're going to get the opportunity over someone that doesn't because that is the direction all of this is going in. Um, the future in this business, I believe, and I think most people would agree with me on this, belongs to folks that can either create great content or drive people to that great content. If you can do both of those things, you're made and, well, all of what I said is meaningless, just go do what you do. But it really couldn't hurt, and if you are looking to be a broadcaster, getting comfortable talking into a microphone, being comfortable talking into a camera, that is such a big hurdle to cross, and you can get that by podcasting or vlogging or whatever the case may be. So that's it. Um, do you have to go to college to be on the radio? No, no you do not. It really couldn't hurt though, and if you do go, um, use it to get yourself an internship. The other thing I would say is when picking your major and picking what you would study, I hesitate to do this because, well, I, know, I don't want to tell you to have a backup, but because that sounds like you're setting yourself up for failure, but you might get into radio and go, ugh, this is not for me, this is not something, I, this looked like a lot more fun from the outside looking in, which, by the way, um, nothing is as cool as you think it is. When I was in a band and I had a record deal, it was great, it was one of the best times of my life, but it was not what I pictured it to be when I was going in. And same with radio, I love it so much, I love what I get to do every single day, but there are parts of it that, were a very big surprise and there's parts like I said because it changes so quickly that happen every single day that are a very big surprise um, so you if you go to college I would advise you to take whatever courses it takes to get you that internship which is going to allow you to learn and get opportunities from people that are doing it right now and also study something that's going to give you an option is that fair I think that's, yeah, that makes sense. Anyways, good luck to you, and if you have any questions, you can always hit me up. Um, the DMs are open for Ask AD or anything else. If there's ever anything I can do to help, um, all you got to do is ask, and if I can, I will.